Oh, sorry, Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seeds of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Father, tonight we have come again to learn at your feet. Speak to us in the way that only you can, and let there be an ignition of fresh grace in our spirits. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Two weeks ago, we started a series called Reviving a Reading Culture. Reviving a Reading Culture. And we had a break last week. And today we want to go into part two of that and trust God to see if we can finish up. If not, then there will be a part three. Reviving a reading culture. If you are very, very observant about the life that we live in right now, you will realize that of a truth, knowledge makes a lot of difference. We have had it said over and over again that knowledge is power, but that may seem like a slogan to you until you get into the field where knowledge plays a lot, and you see how a deficiency in knowledge can set you apart from the world of success. It's very, very important for us to realize as children of God that if we are ever going to work in the fullness of the plan and the purpose of God for our lives, we need to place a premium on the acquisition of knowledge. If you are not informed, you will be deformed. If you are not inspired, you will expire. If you are not updated, you'll be updated. And it is information that is the key to transformation. Whoever you are, whatever you are today is a function of information. Like I said in the first part, a wise man once said that where you will be in the next five years will be determined by the books you read and the friends you keep. The books you read, information, the friends you keep, association. So it simply means that your information and your association determines your destination. And someone once said, if you want to hide anything from a black man, hide it in a book, and I consider that to be an insult. But with the way we live our lives most of the time, we tend to make it true. In Proverbs 23 and verse number 23, the Bible says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Another translation says, Do everything you can to acquire knowledge, and when you get it, don't let it go for anything. Because knowledge is very key in order for us to excel in life. And like we saw in the first part, readers are leaders. If you want to lead, you must learn to read. And that is why when you go all over the world, one of the major propaganda of the enemy and one of the major strategy of those that want to keep people in bondage is to keep them ignorant. If you can keep them ignorant, you can keep them in darkness. If you can keep them ignorant, you can keep them in bondage. Because what people do not know, they don't fight for. So when you look all over the world, you discover that ignorance is one of the major tools in the hand of people. They try to make sure that you don't know what you are supposed to know so that you will not fight for what you are supposed to fight for. If you don't know your rights, how can you fight for your rights? If you don't know your rights, how can you fight for your rights? So you need to understand that it's very key for us to be very, very knowledgeable. And one of the things that will help us to become knowledgeable is reading. Reading. When you look at the Bible, the Bible says give attention to reading. It's very important. But our reading culture in our generation today has become so bad and is becoming worse with the advent of all kinds of technology. And instead of using this technology to advance our knowledge base, uh, this technology has become a distraction to water down the kind of w development that we have in our lives. 
There are a lot of people today that are very strong physically, but they are deficient mentally. So there's so much mental deficiency in our world today. And you find out that a lot of people can dress so nice, look so pretty, look so handsome, look so powerful. But when you bring them to the table of knowledge, then all the muzzle and all the beauty and all the suits becomes useless when their ignorance begins to manifest. So you need to understand that ignorance is darkness. And the more you remain in ignorance, the more you remain in darkness. So we are talking about the need for you to rise up and make a commitment that knowledge is important to me and I will do everything to continue to grow because the day you stop learning, you start dying. The day you stop learning, you start dying and it is knowledge that will help you to grow. But many people don't want to go through the process of acquiring knowledge. They just want to jump to the top. But you see, if you jump up, you will come down. But if you grow up, you will stay up. So it's very important for you to make sure that you give attention to knowledge and information. So we began to look at why you need to develop this reading culture, why you need to revive this reading culture. And I think we look at just two points in part one. We said number one is the pathway to greatness. You need to revive and develop a reading culture because it is the pathway to greatness. If you want to excel in life, you must be a man of knowledge, you must be a man of information. A wise man once said, if I have been able to achieve anything, it's because I've been able to stand on the shoulders of others. And I said in the first part, when you stand on the shoulders of people, you are able to see farther than they have seen because their greatest height will become your own platform. So when you begin to learn from people and read people's biography and learn from people's story and you get information from people's experience, it will help to speed up your life and it will be a leverage for you. I am really, really, really very, very, very burdened about the level of shallowness and mental deficiency in today's generation. A lot of people today have placed so much emphasis on things that do not matter in the long run. They have placed an emphasis on things that do not stand the test of time. Fashion will come and go. Fat will come and go. Things that are raining will come and go, but what will stand is who you are, the substance of your person. And knowledge is very key. Knowledge is what is very key. So number one is the part of the great. Number two, it inspires and motivates. And we saw how that, we look at the story of Karl Marx and Stalin, how that a small little pamphlet was written by one man and many years later, another man picked up that little pamphlet, and by reading that little pamphlet, something steered up in him, and communism became a major terror of the 20th century that changed many things in the world until the fall of communism. And everything communism came based on one little mini book written by one man. When you look at the word of God, you will see how that when people came in contact with knowledge, you will hear men say, and the spirit entered me. As they are reading the word of God, it entered. There was a revelation. There was a steering by the word of God. And they were able to walk in dimensions of grace. And I am praying that tonight, even as we receive the communion, every mental laziness, every laziness, when it comes to acquiring knowledge, we die supernaturally. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So we move on tonight, number three. You need to revive a reading culture because reading informs and reading educates. Reading informs and reading educates. When you are a reader, you have information. Reading will inform you. Reading will educate you. You will be at least knowledgeable. Because it will be am it's amazing to know that a lot of people just don't know anything. I was speaking with someone yesterday and I said, look, listen to me. 
It's very key for you to have knowledge, a little knowledge of almost every aspect of life. Just have general knowledge, okay, so that when they mention something, you will not be a novice completely. At least you will have some basic knowledge. A pastor met with one of the lawyers in the church after one of our conferences here, where I've spoken to them about the need for them to register their ministry and do things right and all those things. I introduced the lawyer, and the, the man of God went to the lawyer and said, ah, hey, you are the one, please. I want to register my ministry. How do we go about it? Guys, okay, no problem. The first thing we are going to do is that we have to um, send the name of the ministry to CAC so that we can do a search of the name. He said, hey, CAC, Christ Apostoly Church. I know that church. I know that church. And that is a pastor. That's a general overseer in the 21st century world. He does not understand the correlation between CAC and church registration. He's talking Christ Apostolic Church. So question, what kind of message will he preach? What kind of church will he run? What kind of members will he have? So many times you are laughing now, but in your area, are you a novice? How much do you know in the area you call your own? Hello? I was speaking with one of our sons today. We just came to see me and we just started. I said, look, listen to me. I've said it over and over again. You are a son in this house. Nobody grows young. Everybody grows old. I said, no, do, no, do. This thing you say you have been doing, you have been doing it for 10 years. I say, after 10 years, you should be able to know what you are doing. I said, listen to me. If you enter a new industry, you are permitted to be confused for five years. You are permitted to be confused. When you enter a new industry, at least five years, let's say you are confused, you are trying to say, but after five years, you should have known where you are going to and be able to say, this is it. And the next five years, you should be able to make it. So after 10 years in something, if you have not been able to find your level, then you are either confused or you are visionless. Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying now? So it is reading that informs you. It is reading that educates you. Every one of us today, they say, okay, how many of you have BSc? You stand up. What did you do to get BSc? Was it anointing service? Was it communion service? Hello? Do we have any lawyer here tonight? Any lawyer? You are a lawyer? Come. Any medical doctor? Engineer? Engineer, come. Let's find out. You are a barista at law. So, what makes you a lawyer? You, you went to school. And then you went to law school. And they were teaching you, giving you lectures. What makes you an engineer? You went to school. And studied engineering. Okay. Um, when you were going to school, did they do anointing service for you? Eh. Uh -huh. What of communion service? What of night vigil? Ah, uh, you didn't do feet washing? Okay. No fasting. They didn't prophesy. So the one that makes you a lawyer and an engineer, not prophecy, is the things you read that you give attention to over a period of time. You continue to learn one year, two years, three years, four years, and then you came out and you were certified. Now what now makes you think that if information is what makes you a lawyer, it is prayer that will make you prosperous? What now makes you think? If it is information that makes you an engineer, it's communion service that will now cast out the devil of your family. Hello? It's night vision that will make you succeed in marriage. Are you seeing the foolishness of Christianity that we practice today? God bless you. Go and sit down. So we want to pray. We want to do communion. We want to do an answer. We don't want to know anything. So chloroform brain. We chloroform spirits. We chloroform mind. It's trophy communion. Are you seeing why these things are looking like nonsense? Shallow Bible you are not reading. So you don't even know anything. So ordinary Jehovah witness can flow you. A Muslim can tell you the Bible contradicts itself. Look, the Bible says in Hebrew, and then it says in Leviticus, hey, 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 I will go and ask my pastor. <laughs> Hello? Let me tell you something. The easiest way to identify is fake. It's not to study fake. It's to be so used to the original that when fake shows up, 
you identify it. You don't study fake to identify fake because there are different dimensions of fake, but there's only one original. Hello? When you study forensic you know, science and then you study, you see a lot of, um, there are dogs that they used to you know, check if people are carrying drugs. When you travel, sometimes you get into some countries and when they know the plane is coming from Nigeria, there are some people who now wait with dogs. All of you will be passing. The dogs will be smelling all of you. Now, to know whether you carry something. Now, many years ago, I was coming from the UK and I had some every money in my pocket. But I have counted the money because you can't travel more than a particular amount. So I've already counted it. So I, I made sure it was less than the money I'm supposed to carry so that I know that I'm legal. But as we were going, I've never seen, that was the first time I met with all those dog things. The dogs were just, you know, sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. And then the thing just followed. They said, excuse me, please. Are you carrying any money? So already I knew. I said, oh, yeah, I'm carrying. I mentioned the amount. It's okay because the dog could smell the money. I said, yeah, hey, oh, that's nice. So the person next to me, I was now, I said, ah, dog. He said, ah, you don't know these dogs? Ah, they can smell anything. No. So we're now discussing. How do they smell? The guy now educated me. We're just gisting. He said, no, that he had worked in a bank. That what they would do is, when they want a dog, there are dogs that are in charge of drugs. There are the ones that are in charge of paper money. That the drugs that are in charge of money, they will lock them in a back room with money. They will just leave them there. That's where they will be sleeping, waking up. So everything about their subconscious is money. So when they release them from that place, anywhere there is money, the smell, they will go there. Because that is what they have been used to. I say, hey, that's serious. So in order for you to be able to, oh, Shandala Bako Siande, in Gradosh, that's serious. <laughs> in order for you, hello, to be able to say that is fake, you must be so used to the original that you spend so much time in the original that when a fake shows up, you say, no, something is not right. You know how you will hear something and your spirits will do like, ah, uh ah, -uh, no, that thing, which part, ah, uh ah, -uh, I never know that. No, it's because you are used to original. So you can easily identify the fake. Hello, somebody. So why do you need to read? So that it will do what? It will inform you and it will educate you. It will what? Inform you and it will educate you. Number four. Number four, you need to revive a reading culture because it helps to sharpen your skill. It helps to sharpen your skill. There is a difference between skilled laborer and unskilled laborer. You can give two tailors the same five yards of clothes with the same machine and put them in the same room and they will sew cloth and come out and you will see that one is one. Okay, let me ask you a question. When we were growing up, they used to call some clothes ready-made. Ah, that's ready-made, that's ready-made. As a young boy, I used to think that ready-made was made by a machine and the other one was made by a human being. Until I discovered that it is the same human being that makes the one we call ready -made. So the question is, how come this one is so sharp, beautiful, and this one looks somehow? It's skill. Skill. One has skill, one does not have skill. So when you continue to read, you continue to listen to tapes, you continue to develop yourself, you continue to educate yourself, you will become skillful. You will become what? Skillful. That's why the Bible says strong meat belong to those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. They have become skillful in the handling of things. So when you continue to read, you continue to expose yourself, that reading, that knowledge, that information, that exposure will make you to become skillful. So it sharpens your skill. So you find out that the same thing you are doing, somebody else may be doing it, but there will be something about your own that just changes the whole equation. You go to some places to eat, 
And by the time they tell you the name of the food, you are wondering, what is this thing they are going to bring out? By the time they finally bring out the food, it is ordinary eba and okra soup. But the way they will design the eba, the eba will be looking like this. There will be line, one line, two lines, three lines. They will not put flour around the eba. Then they will put one brown thing again. Ah, ah, eba le. <laughs> and then they will bring the soup. And then at the end of the day, when you say how much, they say three five. You say, eh, three five. We have a done branch, Mama Sikina, I chop for a bank for more and pure water. 89 and 120 come out. But you see, that's skill that they had to eat, just put the rice one kind, you know, arrange the thing. So they, put, they might put the rice in one small bowl to give it a shape. They now turn it over, the rice will just stand like a mountain. <laughs> then they put carrots like this, put one leaf, and it will be looking at you like they say, that is one five. <laughs> it's skill. It's cute, but it is the same rice. The Mamasika rice is well, 50. And Uncle? Okay, Chef Akwama, okay. And they will give you, and only a 79. The same thing. The same thing, but it is a function of skill. Skill. So you find out when you now ask that guy, see what did you learn? He said, I went to the culinary school of culinary science. What is, the, what is the science of cooking? <laughs> but they without make it look so somehow in school of culinary. I have you know diploma in egg making. <laughs> egg no be egg. But by virtue of reading, they will tell you no, there are 13 kinds of egg. There's boiled egg, there's crushed egg, there's fried egg, there's plastered egg, there's mixed as a I hope you know there is powdered egg. Yes. Egg will be powder. Ah, you see. <laughs> so they mix it, it becomes liquid. They will just be pouring like that. Even they chop it, they chop eggs. They, they give me correct one. Break the shell, make I see. I know one that I want this one. They bring it, break, make I see. Let me see the yolk and the abdomen. Oh, yeah, mix it. <laughs> when you travel abroad, they can confuse you. You say egg. I say, what is this? You say, I don't know. You don't have egg. Egg. <laughs> oh, feed me with what I don't know. Say, no, it's also egg. I say, I don't want. Give me correct one. I don't want chemical. Do you want? Uh -huh, that one. <laughs> Praise God. It does what? It sharpens your skill. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Exercise is not one of my very strong points. But when you see people that exercise, as they begin to exercise and exercise and exercise, their muscles, their body begin to firm up. They begin to have you know, strong energy. They have strong resilience. They have tenacity. And after a while, they see muscle coming out. Then they have two pack, three pack. Not like all of us that have one pack. So they have four packs, six pack, thirteen pack. Looking solid guys. Now, you see what they have done to their body is they have put themselves on a discipline and a regimen. And that discipline and that regimen brings them to a level where their body is so strong. So when people like us that do not exercise regularly do something physical for a while, we start panting like a dog. <sighs> give me water, give me water. Glucose, glucose. But for people like that, they will run and do it and then they are still sharp, ready to go on. Why? Because they exercise. So reading is to your mind what exercise is to the body. So as you read, you are exercising your mind. You are exercising your mind. So you see a lot of people, we do workers class in this ministry, we do some long thing, and you see some people, when we start workers class, 8 a.m., and we are going to 4, that 8 a.m., they are alive. 9, 10. When it's reaching 10, some people are already sleeping, going to the toilet every 10 minutes. Their brain cannot capture anything again. 
Why? Because they have not been mentally expanded. Do you understand? But many people have been coming to workers' class, workers' class, and they have become so strong that they can sit down 10 hours. That, why? Because that has become a training ground. For some people, when it's physical, they are going all the way. Some people, when it's mental, they are going all the way. When it's spiritual, they are going all the way. Why? Because they have developed their physical muscle, they have developed their mental muscle, they have developed their spiritual muscle. Some people spiritually want to start praying now. Every enemy of my soul die. Hey, 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 that, that, that. Prayer upon number two. Hey, hey. By the time you reach prayer upon number seven. <laughs> Every weapon formed against me, they would have sat down. <laughs> Come and see. Last week, we did two hours prayer, stretch. Open heaven, no preaching. Two hours. We're not going. Pa, pa. By the time we got to 30 minutes, some people were already sitting down, hanging around the wall. You know what I say? Is it, see? See? No stamina in the spirit. Hello? So when you read, what it does is your mind is being exercised. It's being exercised. It's being exercised. It's being exercised. So you can handle a lot. Because I tell people, you want to be a millionaire, you want to be a CEO. Do you know the mental work of being a leader? Hello? I told someone today, I say, if as a pastor, your capacity, your internal capacity is 200 members, if they put you in charge of 3,000 members, if you don't grow up in five years, that church will reduce to 200 members. You will begin to make mistakes that will drive people away. You will begin to organize things that will show people your deficiency and they'll begin to find their level. After a while, you will just discover that you have 200 people. They will meet up with your level if you refuse to grow to their level. I get what I'm saying now. So that's what reading does. So I see a lot of people. You can see that something is wrong upstairs. Something is wrong upstairs. And let me tell you something. Except you take responsibility. Nobody can force you. I'm telling you. You must make personal development your destiny project. See, I refuse to be under. I refuse to remain small. I must be great. I must be... That tenacity of purpose is what makes you to... You can always tell and say, look, when you say you need somebody to motivate you, who will be motivating people like us? Hello? Who will tell me, Lumine, read your Bible? Have you prayed today? Have you read the book? Who will tell me? It is that drive never to be a failure that brought us to where we are. That is what is keeping us where we are. So if you are waiting for somebody to keep motivating, to keep pushing you, you will not go far in life. You won't go far. Number four or five? Number five. Okay, anyone? Choose your number. It keeps you current in a changing world. It keeps you current in a changing world. The world is changing. The world is changing. Since, uh, uh, you have to be current. When computers started, and everybody was doing computer, 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 I look at myself. And I told myself, if you want to matter, you must be computer literate. I went to school as a man of God. Epoch computers in Allen in those days. Epoch computer of Allen. I went to do desktop publishing. Three months course to learn how to type. We didn't know how to do it because they didn't use that to teach us in the school in our own days. So I had to go and learn. In fact, when I drove to the school, my friend was there. When I drove there, the girl that was to teach me was shaking like this. How do you teach a great man of God? That's even then, you, know, in, 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 you can imagine there, they thought we were great. The girl was, hey, sorry, sir. Hey, so you see, sir. I said, you know what? You are my teacher. I am your student. Forget that I'm a pastor. Forget church. Imagine that you don't know me. So talk to me the way you talk to your story. Teach me this thing. I have paid money. Don't use sasa sa, sa, to keep money. <laughs> Teach me this thing. Hey, sa, 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 sa. They used to be doing, yeah, yeah. So, so what do you think I should do now? 
Okay, should I press that one now? And then you pay money, you don't go learn anything. Pride! I skill many people. They're not teachable. I said, my sister, you are my teacher now. So I say, yes, ma'am. What do you, I say, okay, yes, ma'am. So that you will know that you are ma. On this thing, teach me first. I had to go and learn. When mobile phone came, I didn't know how to do test message. I didn't know. I had to say, okay, what is this text? You say, no, be just like keyboard, none. So you do, you press it, you go, okay. And I had to learn how to use to send text. See, today, some people can't send text. They can't send text. They can't. There's a pastor in London that has over 2,000 members. I went to preach for him a few years back. Not too long, this, not just in the last six years old. Went to preach for him in the morning and went to come in the evening. And then the people that were to come, I didn't see. And I said, please, so when they come, let them just call from that. I said, I didn't hear anything. Later on, I go, I said, I want to go. I send you text. He text. Ah, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> and he's in London. So don't think that somebody is in London is better than you do. Wherever you are, develop yourself. So it keeps you current in a changing world. Listen, there are many things that seven, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago was a miracle drug. But today it's a killer drug. It's because people were learning. They now say, ah, that thing is causing cancer. As it's healing malaria, it's causing cancer. But why did they know that what was healing malaria was causing cancer? It was continual learning. Continual, they refused to sit down and say to they now realize that that drug is no more working. There are, every year, they bring in new words into the dictionary. So every year, the dictionary is having new words, new words. So if you say you know last year, and this year, they are bringing a new word into the dictionary, if you play Scrabble, you will discover that the Scrabble dictionary, when you, somebody will give you a word, say, no, there's nothing like that. That does not exist, it's okay. Then you say, hey, ah. a word like that exists, you have gotten one knowledge. So you, that's, you keep learning, you keep learning. If you're an accountant, there were software they were using before. Now there's a new accounting policy that is all over the world now. So with time, if all you know is the old way, you are inspired. You say, I'm a chartered accountant, you can't charter a plane. Charter what? No, no, you, you are inspired. Are you going to say no? Do you know that in this generation, the way medicine and science has advanced, if you go to some Nigerian hospital, they will still treat you like an animal. They will cut you, open you. Surgery are done now without any mark on your body. They will just put something and then all your intestines, they will be checking it on the screen, okay, move it left, do that. And then when you finish, you can't see anything. But Nigeria, <laughs> <laughs> then they start showing you like a tailor. And then six months later, you are still like that. One year later. Then may God forgive you or help you if they don't forget six or six side. <laughs> and then they take you back for a second touch and a new baptism to bring out the scissors. Hello? Is it addressing you are doing? Is it fashion designing? Things have moved on. Even photograph, have you forgotten those days? When they take picture, they will now do the film, they will now take it and go into a dark room. And after many days, they will bring it back. But today, how many of you have all those things? Everything is technology. Why? Education. People are educating themselves. They are changing. They are learning. They are changing. They are learning. But some people refuse to learn. Even in ministry, you don't do it like in those days. Church service is minimum of three to four hours. 9 to 12. Even by 12, spirit is still moving. But today, everybody has narrowed down. Some people are still doing that Methuselah service. Because an average TV program is 30 minutes. Once it's more than 30 minutes, it has become a film. It's no more a program. So, we live in a generation where people listen to 10, 15 minutes radio program 30 minutes television program, within that 30 minutes there is four adverts, there are all kinds of beautiful scenery, so their brain has frozen to 30 minutes. So when you start preaching, if you are not a strategic preacher, you are not a skillful preacher, 
by 30 minutes, people are just looking like you. They are slept. They are already home. All the things you are saying, they are brave, can't capture it again. So when you are still talking, oh, hallelujah, now let's go to point number 17. <laughs> they are gone. They are gone. Hello? But as I'm talking now, you are laughing. So even if you want to sleep again, you laugh again, you wake up again, you go, that's skill. It's skill. Skill. Hello? <laughs> but some people, by the time they, so you, you, within 15 minutes, you are sleeping. Because you don't even know which area they are going to. They have not established. They never established journey. So it keeps you current in what? In a changing world. And finally, it is the will of God. It is the will of God. It is what? It is the will of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Of truth. Now let's um, go into some very important stuff. Few tips that I want you to note if you are going to develop a reading culture. Number one, analyze your reading. Analyze your reading. Analyze your reading. Do an analysis of your life and your reading and ask yourself, am I reading enough? Do I know enough? So analyze your reading. Analyze your reading. Number two, create time for reading. You will never have time for anything except to create it. So everybody, hey, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. If you don't create time, you cannot have time. I've read an average of one book per week for over 20 years. I've read my Bible Genesis to Revelation every year for 20 years now. This is the 20th year, if not more. I read the book of Proverbs every month over 20 years now. And that's it, apart from magazine apart from newspaper, apart from listening to tapes. Hello? So, don't tell me you don't have time. If you enter my master's bedroom today and enter my toilet, you will see book there. Even when I'm doing major or minor, I don't waste time. So there is a book there. It may take me one year to finish that one. Once I'm doing the do, I check. Anywhere I finish, I put, I put it there. When I go do again, I do. So that one is toilet. When I finish, I can't. Have, so in the toilet, I always put book that are 700 pages, 1,500 pages. So we don't read as much more for the next one year. That one is apart from. So no, no time is wasted. Because when you sit down there, you can sit down there for a while, depending on what is happening. <laughs> Hello? So why you are going through that experience? You are loading yourself. Hello? If you enter my car now, you will see all manner of tapes, music, messages, all manner, audio, video, you know, thank God for prosperity. There's video in the car, everything, you can watch television, everything, there, there. You know, everything is there. We went to Ibad on Monday, and I already loaded what I wanted to listen to, and then we entered the car, because I went with three other people, and there's this guy we went with. Do you know, from the time we picked him in my house, until we got to Ibadan, the guy did not stop talking. The guy did not stop talking. I now asked myself, I said, like, play, like, play. This guy, two hours has gone. I have not listened to one tape. At the point, I said, Dake, shh, Dake. Pay to Soto. Bungu message with you. I had to stop him. I said, stop, stop, stop. Master of all. Because you won't know when the enemy will rob you. I said, stop talking. Ah, not take code bad door. Ah, music, my message is gone. You know, stop talking. I said that I have already said to this. The tapes that this tape I must finish for me. Yeah, yeah, stop talking. I said that, yes, sir. Ah, the ghost of battle. No stop. The guy was going. I said, no, stop talking. So we had to start listening. When we started the message, ah, Baba, said you go here. Hey! 
What is as a he wanted me to start doing the sentences on the message again. I said, no, just listen. So at the point I kept quiet, I was just listening. Mm. Just to create a psychology for him to keep quiet. I did, mm, mm. He too now started, mm. I said, eh. <laughs> Because the guys had the waste of time. So I just kept quiet as if I'm in the spirit. I said, mm. I did, mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't waste my time. <laughs> Hello? So create time. Create time. I don't have time. I don't have time. You are not serious. You are serious. If you need to wake up one hour earlier, wake up. If you need to sleep one hour later, sleep. Don't tell me you don't have time. They have time. They have time. They have time. <laughs> Number three, balance your reading. Balance your reading. I was asked a question, and that's my belief. Do you think the reading culture of people is low or high? And my answer is, really, people read, but they don't read the right things. There are people that sit down on Facebook for seven hours. That's reading now. You are reading something and answering and reading. And just, eh. But is, is it benefiting your life? There are people that know all the news in town, all the blogs. They know everything. They are correct. But when it comes to their own life, they don't know. When it comes to what to progress or move them forward, they don't know. So you need to balance your reading. I believe it was Billy Graham that said, a successful pastor is the one that has the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in another hand. With the newspaper, it discovers the problem, and with the Bible, it profiles solution. So what that says is balance. Don't say, I'm born again now. Our brother is an engineer, our sister is a lawyer. It was not Bible they read. Most of the books they read was written by atheists and free thinkers. But today they say they are engineer, they are lawyer. So you can now become born again and say, I don't want to read any book written by unbeliever. All I read is the Bible. All I read is the word of God. And then you read the word of God. And then you don't know when they change the name of your streets. You read the word of God. You don't know when they change your governor. You read the word of God. You don't know when a new party emerged. You don't know the word of God. Word of God. So who is the governor of Lagos? Ah, uh, Jack on day now. <laughs> Yeah, you are correct, 22 years ago. So that shows how late you are in knowledge. Are you getting us there now? So you need to do what? You need to balance your reading. So as a Christian, read your Bible, read books, books that have to do with your life, your career, read books on the mind, read books on fashion, read magazines, read books on social issues, read books on politics. Get to know what's happening around you. Read the Nigerian Constitution, read current affairs, read newspaper. Just balance things up so that you will not just be a one-sided Kwashoko Christian. Number four, respond to your reading. Respond to your reading. That's why you should buy your own book and not uh, borrow book. Respond to it. When you are reading a book and you are able to underline something and put notes by the side as you are writing, you see, whenever you write, your mind records it. So writing helps your subconscious mind to be engaged. When you are reading a book and you are not writing anything, you are reading, your mind is storing it. But when you begin to take notes, it moves from your mind to your subconscious mind. Once you engage your hand, the muscles in your hand is connected to your brain and is connected to your subconscious mind. So it goes deeper than just reading. So it's very important for you as you are reading, you have a, okay, you take notes, you underline this. You will realize that over a period of time, those things that you underline, you will remember it more than other things you did not underline. Because your subconscious mind will store it and it will be coming back to you through the valve of your memory. So these are things that you need to understand about the human machine. So know what to read and what not to read. It's not everything you read. Know what to read and what not to read. Um, I have a friend who's been here before. And he got born again while we are on campus. But um, 
there are about few of them that were involved in one occultic stuff like that. But the person that really started the journey of the occultism was not planning to go into occultism. But he went into his father's library at home and saw a book and picked up the book and started reading the book. And as he was reading, the book said, do you want to discover the secret of life? If you want to, go to page 46. So from page 41, he went to page 46. And he started explaining some things. He said, if you are really interested and you want to continue the journey, go back to page 12. He went back to page Then go to page 96. Unknown to him, as he was going from page to page, he was entering into an astral cycle in the realm of the spirit. By the time he would get to a point, he lost his mind and was in the realm of access and transcendental meditation and astral, astral. He was in the realm. And that's how he was initiated. He initiated this man. And then the, the day their deliverance took place, that was when this woman of God that came for a women's meeting, Funkade, Tuber, Funkade, she was the one that, that was the first time I ever met her. See fire. So that woman you saw that day, we were in school on campus when I have known her. She came from Ibadan with Funke Ade Jumolo that they came to do deliverance on campus. Come see this guy. The guy came because a lady, he was toasting a girl. The girl now said, if you want me to just follow me to church first. So that was the day the guy now came. This woman of God preached. Hey! See fire. I never seen that kind of thing before. The guy was manifesting. And the mystery was that it was a knife's joint campus, whatever. So people came from UNAB. I was in Elaro. A lady came from UNAB for that meeting. This guy was in Elaro, and they were married in the realm of the spirits with five children together. And ah, you never see deliverance. So all this shuka shuka Christians would I do. What I saw that I say, eh? you will say people they marry inside spirit, born piki. <laughs> it, was, it was something else. So it's not everything you see. That you read. So you now go say, ah, six and seven books of Moses. Oh, this must be the book where there is power. You begin reading, you enter another thing. So don't just be so inquisitive that any book you see, book of Mormon, you carry, you read. They will tell you this is the, the, the missing years of Jesus. Where was Jesus between the age of 12 and 30? The missing years of your carry. You say, eh, missing years of your make we see where Jesus did, you enter. So be careful. Be careful. Then visit bookstores regularly. Visit bookstores regularly. At least once in a month, you should visit a bookstore every time I travel. I go to bookstores. You don't need to go and buy. Just go and browse. Just go and do what? Just go and browse. When you visit bookstore, you'll be amazed that most of the things you are confused about, somebody has written a book on it, part one to four. There are books, oh. There are books. Ah, there are books. So visit the bookstore regularly. And then build your own library. Build your own library. Whenever you see a successful man, Go to their office, go to their house, you will see that they have a library. The library came before the money. The library did not come after the money. I have books in my library when I show you 1991, 1989. There are Bibles I have. When you see the big Bible like this, 35 Naira. 35. Now, these are things we have bought when we were students. When I was leaving school, my books was more than my clothes. But today, you have a bigger wardrobe. You have a smaller library. Your life is in error. No wonder you are not making it. Hello? So, if your wardrobe is bigger than your library, your life is in error. Your life is what? Is in error. So, you need to note this thing. Have your own library. Stop borrowing book. Borrow, 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 borrow. Stop borrowing books. Ah, I like that book. Go and buy your own. The church has a bookstore. When the guest minister comes, they recommend the book. Buy, just be buying. There are books I bought 20 years ago. I have not read it. I have not read it. Hello? Because sometimes 
you buy the book, it is seven years later, nine years later. You say, ah, I think I have a book, and everything you need will be there. So sometimes God positions some books around you. I have books, you cannot see it anywhere. It's out of print, never available. Sometime ago in this church, we read a book called uh, The Church That Never Sleeps. Then many years later, I wanted to read the book again, and the book was nowhere. I contacted the publisher in America by myself. I said, come, he said, ah, it's out of print. You can never get this. We are no more printing. We have stopped printing years ago. Ah -ah. So that means a book like that, if they don't go to the printing again, 20 years from now, some people will never even know any book like that exists. So I had to now contact the church of the author. I said, what do we say? You can photocopy it. You can do it without the photocopy. So listen. Every time you see a book, don't say, I don't need this one. Before I ever got married, I had books on marriage. I have books on ministry. I have books on business. Today, those books, many of them are no more in print. Hello? So your library must be bigger than your wardrobe. Let me give you a few more tips and I close. If you want to succeed in any aspect of life, any aspect of life, you need to read the number of books commensurate to your age in that area. So if you want to succeed in a relationship and you are 30 years old, how many books do you read? 30. 30 books on relationship. You want to succeed in finance and you are 15 years old, how many books do you read? 15. You are 40 years old, how many books do you read? 40. If you are 40 years old and you gather 40 books on finance, before you finish the 40 books, something will drop on you. You need spiritual power. Ah, ah. How to cast out devils, understanding demonology, the defeat, the defeat of Satan. Gather books on demonology, books on spiritual power, how to heal the sick. Ah. How to move mountain, pray, how to carry the presence of God. By the time you finish reading the book, even your eye will be casting out devil. <laughs> because whatever you concentrate on, the thing will drop on you. So whatever you say, I want to do this, I want to do that, just gather books on that area and begin to flow in it. Are you getting that now? Then we live in a technological age. So the same thing that we have been experiencing in the physical, you can now experience it in the cyber. The cyber world is very real. So instead of looking for books, there are e-books. There are audio books. Do you understand now? So the same thing on paper, they will now put it on the screen. So you can now read it on your iPad, your you know, different tablets. So you don't necessarily have to carry a book. Now we preach with iPad. There are all manner of translations of Bible in there. But you need to know that the natural is there. I don't do morning devotion with iPad. Because there's something about that sound of the paper. When you change paper, you hear cross. There's an anointing there. So when it comes to morning devotion, you carry correct Bible, go from pay to pay, mark it. You don't do morning devotion with iPad, though. Don't become so sophisticated that you lose the core of Christianity. Because many people now, they don't even read Bible, they'll be waiting for the screen. Okay, so we have many useless Christianity now. But reality, there are e-books now. There are audio books. So you just listen to it on your iPod, listen to it on your phone, and the author may read it, and somebody else may read it. And you're already reading. It's the same thing. Do you understand? It's just because technology has added. So the same way I'm saying visit the bookstore, you may not physically visit a bookstore, but you can visit a bookstore on your iPad, on your tablet, and go into Amazon, go into different bookstores, go into all kinds of, and then you see new books, you see all kinds of, and now in Nigeria now, we're having our own different kinds of, uh, Dilde, Konga, Amari, all these things, they have Gojumia, all manner of, it's happening in Nigeria, so you can go online, and all these things will open up to you. Rise up on your feet. The Bible says, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, what will happen to them? Lift up your hands to heaven and say, Lord, as I receive the communion tonight, let a new hunger 
and a new test burst forth in my spirit. Open your mouth and begin to pray.